Hello and welcome to the Curry and Knits podcast. My name is Erin and I am so glad that you've joined me here today. I am feeling much better. So thank you all for your well wishes. Um, you can hear maybe a little bit of my voice still, but I have almost fully recovered from what is going around. But you may see, um, I feel a little rosy. It is so unbelievably cold outside. It's um, negative six, but I think with wind chill, it's closer to like negative 15, which is not normal for this early into the winter season. Not only because it's not yet winter, um, but because we've had like a bunch of seasonally warm falls, I guess in the past couple years, so no one's really used to this. We have snow outside from the weather. It seems like it's not sticking. This next week is supposed to go back up to like eight, which I am so looking forward to because holy heck, is it unbelievably cold outside. Um, if you want to see some um, fun videos, look up what Buffalo New York is going through right now. They got like a torrential downpouring of snow. They said like six feet and we got some of that here. But because of how the Great Lakes work, um, we don't get nearly as much as Buffalo does. So I've been enjoying watching a lot of videos of what <laughs> Buffalo is going through at the moment. Um, but I guess we don't have to keep talking about weather. Um, the past two weeks I have spent basically at home. There is a mask mandate at my university again, which I think is mostly a good thing. But um, it means that in my office we can't eat together and we more difficult to work together and it's just meant that I haven't been going into the office as much and so I've been spending a lot of time at home and I've taken the time to really recover, try and get my bearings about me again, try and get my head in a straight place and I'll be starting to get back to working in this upcoming week. I've been doing some work but I've mostly spent my time knitting and preparing for a small yarn sale which I have coming up. So I'm going to actually talk about that first. If you're not interested in a secondhand yarn sale, please skip ahead. Um, I have time stamped everything below and we can go into, you can just skip to the finished objects, but I figured I'd put it at the beginning here because I said in last episode that I would be including it in this episode. So first off, um, an apology, I don't actually have all of the yarn ready in the website ready to sell. I have been working very diligently to skein up all of my cones and it is just a lot, a lot of yarn to go through. And so um, I have actually put an email list below where you can sign up and you will be the first to know when this launches. A lot of you have been emailing and you're very interested in buying, especially the mohair, I'll show it in a moment. Um, but if you sign up to that email, I won't use it for anything else. I will just use it to send one email letting you know, hey, the yarn sale is going live and it'll be just a storefront. Um, I am shipping everything out of Canada using likely Canada Post. Um, so shipping will be something that I don't have a lot of control over. Um, so it'll be whatever the yarn costs plus shipping. I will ship to any place internationally that I can legally, but I can't guarantee that the um, shipping prices will be amazing. If you are on the website, I'm going to be using Shopify, a Shopify storefront in the shipping is seeming outlandish. Um, also feel free to email me and maybe I can go with another carrier to make things a little bit easier for you. But let me show you first what I'm going to be um, selling. I'm hoping to have this storefront up intermittently as I find more yarn secondhand. Um, and I would love to be able to share some of the yarn because often I find cones and I really can't knit through all of it. And so I think that this is an excellent way to be able to make sure that some of you get your hands on some of this yarn as well. So in this sale, I will have, of course, the beloved mohair that you guys have loved. So this is what started it all. I had a kilo leftover of this mohair and I knew that I would not be able to knit enough garments of this <laughs> um, to go through all of it. There's only so many garments that I need in this delightful color. Um, so I have skeined this one up into 50 gram skeins and 25 gram skeins and I will be selling um, a good amount of both of them. I'm probably selling about 750 grams worth of this and this is a silk mohair. It is, um, I will have all the information that I have on the site. Of course, with a lot of this being secondhand, um, there's only so much that I know, but I do know that this is a silk mohair used in luxury branded 
knitwear items. Um, the brand that made this most recently announced a partnership with Gucci. So it really is a luxury silk mohair and it is delightful. This has been washed with a wool wash and skeined up, dried and skeined up. And so I have just a ton of this to sell. So that'll be on the website. I also have this beautiful yarn. So this was also a cone. Um, this, I believe, is a wool mohair blend. And it's interesting because the yarn has some like tufts in it, which would provide really fun texture to a garment. It is a beautiful lavender color. It's washing out a little bit on screen. And I'm going to be selling this in 50 gram skeins. I also have this purple yarn that I'll be selling. I already have a purple garment and quite honestly, there's only so much purple I'm going to wear. Um, this is a bit of a rougher yarn. It is a wool alpaca mohair blend and it's slightly on the rougher side. I need to um, figure out what the weight is. I think it's around a fingering to sport weight, but it has quite a bit of halo around it. And I have about 10 skeins of this, and this will be on the cheaper side, just because I don't know a whole lot about it. I haven't been able to find the brand of it, and it's definitely on the rougher side of yarn. I think it would make a really amazing, like, 80s-style fuzzy jumper, like, oversized fuzzy jumper is what I picture for this and what I was planning to make with it. But I do think the color is really lovely. Um, it has, like, dark and light purple, so it would create just a little bit of um, tonal shifts within whatever garment you have. And then um, the next ones are yarn that didn't come on cones, but is yarn um, that I've mostly gotten secondhand that I just don't think I'll be using anytime soon. And so I'd rather go to someone that would be able to use it much more readily. And so this first one is Irish Cove Wool from Cape Breton in Nova Scotia. And I have three skeins of this. This is um, in their three ply medium and it is pure virgin wool. This is 100 grams. So this looks like this. I've got three of these. And then I've got this worsted cotton from Blue Sky Fibers. It is 100 grams and yeah, so that looks like this. I've got about 10 of these. I think they'd make a lovely blanket. And then lastly, this is one that I bought new and I'm going to throw them in the sale just because I don't think I'm going to use it. Um, I had gotten a wool warehouse. I'll sell it for cheaper than wool warehouse was selling it for. Um, and it is this Drops Nepal. It, I thought it was going to be a burnt orange. It is a very, very orange yarn. So I think I have 10 of these and I'm going to throw them up on the site as well in case any of you would like them or else I'm probably just going to sell it locally. Um, I think it would be really nice for like pumpkins or if you want an orange sweater, I think it would make a really great kids item as well. I just know that this isn't quite what I was looking for and I don't think I will be using this here anytime soon. So I'm going to be throwing that up in the sale as well. So that is all the items I will have in this kind of haphazard yarn sale. I mean, I'm not anticipating all of it to sell by any means. Um, I'm kind of just figuring that this is going to be the thing that goes the most, but I figured while I'm setting this whole thing up, setting up a website, trying to do this right, um, I might as well put up other things that I will not be using as readily. And if I can't sell it online, I know that I'll be able to sell it locally. Um, so yeah, if you live near me, it might also be up on Facebook Marketplace for you to buy. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so if you're interested in that, please sign up to the mailing list. Again, I will only ever use it just this, this one time just to say, hey, the site is live. I'm hoping to have it get done within the next week. Um, I have about like half a cone of this left to skein up and I have most of the cone of this left to skein up, um, wash it and then put into the skeins and then my husband is helping me out with setting up the website which is perfect um so yeah if you have any questions about any of the yarn leave them down below but when the site goes live I'm going to put all of the information about the yarns that I possibly could ever know on the website and so hopefully that'll be enough for you to make a buying decision and yeah that's about all I have to say about that so I guess we can get into finished objects and I am wearing the first finished object. Look at it. 
it's beautiful. Let me stand up. Yeah, it just looks so good. Same on the back. So this is the Tulip Guernsey sweater from Midori Hirose and I am so in love with it. Um, I had shown it, I think it was almost done when I showed it in the last video and I finished it up, I think that evening, if not the evening after. I was able to add about 10 more rows onto the sleeves since the last time and I obviously finished the body as well. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think that the sleeves are a perfect length. Obviously, if I had more yarn, I would have probably done it like the whole way down the arm, but I, it hits below the elbow and that was really what I was aiming for. Um, yeah, this is in the Fiberco Amble and in Santa Scarn, uh, Santa Scarn Mohair. And so nice fingering mohair blend. It has created just a beautiful fabric. I am wearing this next to skin right now. I don't find it overly itchy. And also this... Um, garment I've gotten so much wear out of and it's made me realize that I just want some lighter knitwear especially for around the house um that might change when I move um we're moving into a centering home so it'll likely be a little bit more drafty but for me this is perfect wear in the, in the house I find that when I get home and I'm wearing my knitwear I often want to like shed it for a t-shirt just because it's a little bit warmer in the house and I don't necessarily want to be lounging in it whereas this one's perfect it's short sleeves allows a bit of airflow um, and it's not like overly suffocating. It is also quite oversized. So it, um, it just, yeah, it just wears really well. I found myself reaching for it a lot. And of course I just adore this orangey red color. It is so beautiful. I would love to make more garments. This, this color is kind of what I was hoping this would be. And as you can see, this is a lot brighter <laughs> than this. Um, yeah, I was thinking that it would be like this color, but on the orangier side. And this is just, this is just orange. Um, so yeah, just for some context there. But I love this yarn combination. This is such a beautiful garment. I am so happy with it. And I am absolutely going to make another Tulip Guernsey. Um, I would actually like to make one in a navy blue. Um, the designer whose garment I based this particular design off of, I made some modifications to the original pattern um, from her photo. And she had made her original in a navy blue linen quill. And I have navy blue linen quill in my stash that I had initially going to, I was going to make another color work fingering weight sweater. And I might also make that, but the designer who designed that particular garment has, um, I don't know if I want to design her garments, I won't get into it. <laughs> um, but um, it means that I might be able to use that yarn for something else and I think that this would be beautiful. The only thing is I would have to pair it with some mohair and I am kind of a little bit mohaired out if I'm being honest. I think um, I've made a lot of garments with mohair recently and I really love it but um, a lot of the garments that I've been making have had a lot of mohair fallout um, and a lot of people have been saying to try putting um, mohair garments in the freezer to help the mohair fall out and I will definitely try that. I haven't yet. Our freezer is very full right now um, and we're gonna have to call that down because um, yeah, no one wants to move frozen things. Um, but yeah, it's just meant that I think um, the next garments, except for one that I'm going to be casting on in the near future are going to be mohairless. I think I just need a little bit of a break from the mohair. Um, I'm not big on the halo. I've mentioned this before. I don't knit with mohair for the halo, which a lot of people do. Um, I actually don't really care for a lot of halo in my garments. What I like about mohair is it fills in the spaces. Um, so for example, I was able to knit this on a five millimeter using um, a fingering weight and a lace weight. And ordinarily that wouldn't be enough fabric, but because there's so much halo on the mohair it creates an opaque fabric that um, I'm wearing like a bright orange bra under this and you're not able to see and so that's what I like about my mohair is it kind of fills in the space without adding a lot of heaviness but I think that um, it kind of hurts my fingers to knit every mohair I've tried has had this just because the fiber is so thin it kind of digs into my finger a little bit um, and yeah I just want to go back to um, just pure wool or wool alpaca blends for a little bit. So I think that'll be what's coming up in the near future with one exception, which I will show in a little bit. But let me show you my next finished object first. Okay, this next finished object has been a long, long time coming. And it is my 
sweater number 15. Da, 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 da. She is done. We have sleeves. Oh my goodness. I am so pleased. Um, I just finished this guy yesterday. I just sat and took the morning to finish off the sleeves. These sleeves took forever, forever. I'm not kidding. These sleeves, I think, took longer than the body. I don't know what it was. There were a lot of stitches on there. They had to be quite long. I don't know. But she's done. So I ended up using um, almost five complete skeins of Filcolon Arvetta, and I ended up going into the sixth skein of my Drops Kid Silk. Um, and this is one of those sweaters that I was talking about that, holy heck, the fallout. I think that's why Drops Kid Silk is so cheap is because the fallout of their yarn is astronomical. <laughs> like, more so than any others. This is a Santa's guard. I noticed a little bit of fallout, but nowhere near as much as this one. I'd be knitting on it and I'd get up and I'd look like a furry green monster had attacked me. And I have been wearing this exclusively with my faux leather pants because I can just wipe off the pants. I think if I were to wear fabric pants or like I don't know, I wear a lot of like dress pant type materials. I think it would just cling. I'd need to like walk around with a lint roller. So that's the only downfall of this. I will be trying this in the freezer, but look at it, it is so beautiful. Um, so this is by My Favorite Things Knitwear, um, sweater number 15. Um, this is before her, um, her patterns and size inclusive, but I will say because this has an astronomical amount of positive ease in the sweater, um, I find that the sizing is pretty forgiving, but I will leave a size inclusive version of this sweater that's similar by, I think it's Faye Coleman. Um, I will leave that in the comments box below if you are also wanting to have a similar um, sweater in size inclusive. Um, but yeah, I made a size two just because of how much positive ease is built into the sweater. I think normally I would be a size four, but I didn't want the, I think 30 or so, 30 to 40 centimeters of positive ease this pattern recommends. And I think that the shape is perfect for me. Um, do I have anything else to say about this sweater? It blocked out beautifully. I was a little apprehensive about the sleeves. Um, so I made my sleeves 10 cables long and then did a very small ribbing. Um, and then I was reading as I was doing the second sleeve that she actually recommends doing it one cable shorter than what you think you'll need because it will grow. And I remember I was pulling at these sleeves and they would pull very wide, but I couldn't get them to go very long. And so I was like, I don't know if they're actually going to grow that much, but I'm going to listen to what the pattern says. I ended up uh, frogging back one cable length, like one, one of these and then doing the ribbing again and I will say she was right it does the sleeves in my experience did grow about one cable length so if you are also doing this pattern I would listen to that advice so mine ultimately ended up being nine cable lengths long if you're looking for a reference I am constantly looking at other people's work to see how long about theirs would be and cables provide an excellent opportunity to just kind of count the repeats um so mine was nine if you're around my height stature i'm five two pretty short so maybe you'll need ten but this was perfect for me it hits me right about here which is where I want most of my sweaters hitting. Um, I will say the one thing about this, and I have only seam blocked it, so I'm gonna give it a wet block after this episode to see if it helps, but I find that the cables are visibly pulling the pearl bumps in between them. And let me show you, see if I can show you what I'm talking about. So you see where the cable happens here? It is very visibly pulling the pearls in between the cables in a way that I don't love the look of. I think you can see it really well there. Here, 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 here. And I'm hoping that a good soak will help that, but I'm just not loving the way that looks. And the other thing I'll say is this was on four and a half millimeter needles and I use Arvetta in Kid Silk, which is around the thickness that this would be, and this is on five millimeter needles, but Arvetta must be much thinner of a fingering weight. It must be closer to a light fingering weight because this is still pretty see-through. 
you can kind of see my hand in there. I was wearing a blue bra underneath it and you could definitely see the blue peeking through. So I just have to be a little bit careful what I wear underneath it. No crazy colors. I mean, most of the time I would be wearing a t-shirt underneath it anyways. It is next to skin soft, but just to note. Um, yeah, I'm really interested to see what a full wet block will do to this. I'm really hoping it'll help it kind of smush together a little bit, but I don't know. Regardless, I think it is a stunning finished object. I've already received so many compliments on it, which has been so flattering. My husband said it was one of the best sweaters I had ever made, which was very nice of him to say. I love the color and I think it's really beautiful. I think I would absolutely reuse this design to make a slipover. So because it's a drop shoulder, I think I could just basically knit it without the arms and make it a really beautiful slipover. So that might be in my future as well, but I'm going to take a bit of a break from this pattern because that's a lot, a lot of cabling and a lot of the same cabling. And I think I'm ready for something a little bit different, but I actually have a third finished object, which is very unheard of for me. So let me go pull that out now. So let me bring you back to the 2000s with these babies. I have finished my hand warmers. <laughs> I think they look so ridiculous um, when you're not wearing a long sleeve with it because they really do look like mid-2000s where you just have like these lace hand warmer things and they looked ridiculous. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this is the um, Watch Cap Pearl Soho hand warmer pattern. And I made a whole bunch of modifications to this, which I'll explain shortly. Um, and this is in the Creative Knitters DK base in the color Fireside, which is a stunning orange. I just love it. So this is a super wash yarn and I knew I wanted to wear it somewhere hard wearing. And so I thought that these gloves would be the perfect thing. And I honestly love them. My husband has already requested a pair for himself and it is just in this two by two ribbing, very simple thumb hole. And yeah, you may notice that they look a little bit different from the last time I showed you one of these, and that is because I completely re-knit the first one. Um, so I knit the second one knowing that I wasn't completely happy with the first, and the main reason for that was the thumb hole. A lot of people have commented that this pattern by Pearl Soho runs big, and I would agree with them. I had at first cast on the um, adult small size, and it was way too large and my um, gauge was off by half a stitch and going down a needle size would make it too small. So I decided to do the children's size but the thumb hole then was way too tight and so I just added stitches onto the thumb hole which then looked a little weird. So I decided to re-knit it and instead of doing adding stitches I did the child size for the circumference but the adult size for the thumb which means that there are way more increases along here than the child size and I thought it might like, make the glove look a little bit funky but I think it looks perfectly fine and if anything now the thumb hole is like just slightly big um but I don't mind that and yeah, I think it's perfect. I haven't blocked these yet, so the ribbing's a little funky. Um, not only because, I don't know, my ribbing's not perfect, but also I re-knit the yarn that was in the original one, so it just doesn't look as nice. Um, this gives you a good comparison. So this was like new yarn, and this is reused yarn, and you can see all of the bumpy, funky business going on on this guy. Anyway, I need to wet block those. Those will be going in the bath with my uh, sweater at number 15 as well. This one was already wet blocked. So that one's a-okay, good to go. And I might throw in another sweater in there as well. Not a new FO, more like my sweaters need baths sometimes. And I tend to throw them in with the bath when I'm blocking something new. Anyways, um, yeah, I have been wearing these. They are fantastic. I need to give them a wet block because I would like them to look pristine and new. I think, again, if I were to make these, I did make them a little bit longer this time. I did the length of the adult large. <laughs> so I really just smashed this pattern together. Um, I did the length of the adult large, the thumb of the adult small, and the circumference of the child. And that seemed to work okay. I'm almost 
I think if I were to do it again, I think I'd want mine a little bit longer, even more so. So this is, I think, three inches. It's a free pattern, so that's not giving away anything. I think it's three inches until you start doing the thumb increases, and I think I do closer to five. But this is the size that my husband wants. He th says these are perfect. So I will be repeating this formula again for him. He has requested a black, and that is also what I'm going to be making for my father for Christmas, uh, this pattern along with a hat. I don't know if I'll do the watch cap hat. I do like it. Maybe I'll just do that. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just do that. And then a pair of mitts. They also have a pattern for like full mitts. I just find that these are much more practical in the day-to-day -day life. Good for driving, good for dog walks, etc. cetera. Um, I find that mitts, I'm constantly having to take them off for one reason or another. So if anything, I would try and turn these into convertible mitts rather than full on mitt mitts if that makes sense. But I would recommend this pattern, just know that you might have to do a little bit of packing for your specific hand. Alrighty, let's get in to the whips. I think most of them you've seen, except for two. So maybe that's not most of them at all, but I've got two new ones. Let's get into it. Okay, so this first one you've definitely seen before, and it is, where is the French? the this one why am i blanking on the name of it moby sweater by petite knit i have put some more length on the body i'm almost ready for the ribbing um i said i count other people's a lot of other people have had six including um petite knit the petite knit sample has six full triangles down before they do the rib that's what I'm planning to do as well. Um, I've got, I had to ball this up because I didn't have my um, ball winder on me. I just had the Swift, so it's in a ball. So I've got this much left of my third skein and I've got five skeins. So I think I'm doing really, really well on yarn. So I'm gonna go six down to make it a full size sweater on me and then do ribbing. And I am just finishing up the fifth diamond. So I am very close to finishing the body. Um, I don't have much more to say about this one. I will just, Love the yarn in case you're new here. So this is knit in Daylight's American Cornrow by Harrisville Designs. And it looks like this. It is a really cool base. So they use a natural yarn, in this case, a cream. They also have their night shades, I think it's called, where they do black and then they add in color specs to it. So this is in the uh, color caffeine which is brown specs, but they also have ones in blue specs and green specs and red specs, etc. Um, and I think it's beautiful. I love it. I would love to get more of this. I was talking, I am going to Ottawa next week, which is very exciting. I'm going to be seeing a very special knitter while I'm there. So I'm excited to um, meet her. I won't say any more about that in case things fall through for whatever reason. Um, but um, I was talking about the main knitting shop there has Brooklyn Tweed and I was thinking about getting some Brooklyn Tweed yarn but I was pricing it out and it would be like $150 for a sweater and I just don't have that to spend right now. I don't have that to spend right now and I'm going to have to make another wool warehouse order which I'll talk about in a couple minutes. Um, so I will not be going yarn shopping in Ottawa which is a very bittersweet thing but I'm sure I'll be back again and one day I will have that Brooklyn Tweed sweater. That's follow up from last time if um, you weren't watching that episode. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> so I brought this back up. I did this neckline, which the way that she did the folded over collar was really clever, like really clever. I would buy the pattern just to learn that technique again, because I think it has created a beautiful folded over neckline. Did I put elastic in this? I don't remember. I don't even, no, I did. So then I put a little bit of elastic in there. So that is looking gorgeous. Um, and last time I was talking about how I didn't completely love this sleeve design. And a lot of you had some really wonderful suggestions of what I could do. So basically, I don't love how the cables come out of this double moss stitch here. It feels like they're kind of coming out of nowhere for me. So I was contemplating whether I should just do the full sleeve and double moss stitch or something else. And I've decided to do the sleeve as is. But you may be thinking, that is what you didn't want to do. And I am going to do it for the following reason. 
This sweater has been such an enjoyable knit for me. I've honestly, I can't think of a knit that I've enjoyed knitting on more, except for maybe this sweater. It would probably be its biggest competitor. The combination of the yarn and the pattern, it provides just as enough interest. It is easily memorable, memorizable. That's not a word. Um, I can memorize it very easily. And so I'm not constantly looking at the pattern, but I'm constantly doing something with my hands that's not just knitting. And sometimes you need that. And I think it has been just delightful to knit on. For that reason, I think that that interest on the sleeves where it has the cable in the pattern, you basically have this section on the sleeves with the moss around it. I think it'll make it a more enjoyable knit. And for that reason alone, I'm going to do the sleeves as is. Does it bother me that the cable comes out as if from nowhere? Yes, it does. But I think that the enjoyability of knitting it as is will counteract the way that I think the sleeves look a little funky knit as is. Someone I'd recommend that I could do a garter edging on the sleeves as I pick up to try and like make it look different and I'm a little weary to do that. I would want to see someone else do it first. I don't know if I want to be the guinea pig for it. So I don't know. I don't think I'll be doing that, but I thought that was probably the most clever suggestion. Not that I didn't love all of your suggestions, they were all fantastic, but um, I think I'm just going to knit it as is. I know that's probably not the most exciting way to do this, but um, I think it will be the most enjoyable and that is what I'm going for for this knit in particular. Let's go to the next one. This next knit is one that is brand new and it is the last knit I have that is for me. The rest of them are gift knits. And this one is one that I've had the yarn for for a long time, but haven't had the right pattern for it slash the right companion yarn. And so I'm gonna try and show this. It's kind of at an awkward spot to show, but it is a drop shoulder sweater. I am working on the front panel right now. This is the back. It has a beautiful sleeve detailing here. And this is sweater number 24 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Her latest two patterns are completely size inclusive, so I'm very thrilled to be supporting that. They go up to a 4XL, and the largest size is 60 something inches around, which is great. High, high 60s, I believe. And I am knitting this in Drops Air and Drops Kid Silk. And those are the colors, both in the navy blue color and Drop Sarah is one of my favorite yarns of all time. I have had this in stash for a while with the intention of knitting with it. And the reason I didn't knit this with just Drop Sarah, which would be my preference for the squishiness, is because I have a sweater in just Drop Sarah, and it is the pilling master of all sweaters. And I have to depill it basically every single time I put it on my body. It is constantly creating these little pills and I am constantly, every time I'm wearing it, it's like a full-time job to just pick these things off my body. And I've heard from several other podcasters that the best way to knit with Drops Air is to pair it with the Drops Kids Silk. And that kind of helps the Drops Air kind of come in on itself and stick together a little bit more. <laughs> and so I am trusting the podcasting community to guide me through this. And I have been putting these together. So I do have a couple of yarn acquisitions from Wool Warehouse, and this is one of them, this Kid Silk. So once it came in, I decided to cast this on, and they are creating just the most stunning navy blue, almost like it's between a navy and a cobalt blue color, and I just love it. It's creating just a very slight marling effect because the Kid Silk is ever so slightly lighter than the um, Drops Air. And I don't have any sweaters in blue, and I just think that this is looking beautiful. I just, I've been knitting on it quite a bit just because I want to stare at the color combination. And also, if I hold my yarns right, 
the drops air is thick enough that I can put the kids silk kind of on top of it and then not feel the kids silk digging into my finger. And the drops air is just so delightful to work with. It's just like a cloud, not this guy. This is like a cloud and I love it very much. And yeah, drops air, I just adore. It is um, a mix of alpaca, polyamide and wool. So 65% alpaca, 28% polyamide, and 7% wool. And I think it's the alpaca content, the high alpaca content, that is just so squishy. Um, I've seen other people use Drops Air a lot in color work, and I have literally no idea how that would work. Um, like, I understand how it works, but I just don't think it would have the integrity that I think color work needs, if that makes sense. Other than, like, a stripe. For me, Drops Air is something to create an all-over color garment in, not so much color work. And that is what I've done with every garment I have done in Drops Air. And this is my third, and I would love to do more. Um, but yes, she's looking so nice. So I am very excited to finish this front panel, then I can do the neckline, and then it's just in the round forever and ever. And I am very excited to get to that point of the sweater. And I actually realized that this neckline uses the same technique as the petite knit neckline did. And it is a technique that I loved doing with a folded all over, folded over neckline. So if you wanna learn that technique, I don't wanna spoil the pattern, um, either of these sweaters would be good options for it. Um, and I've just been really enjoying a drop shoulder sweater lately. Um, I do love a good raglan. I do find it easier to knit on. Um, this is a lot of purling in this particular pattern. But I mean, once you're past the yoke, there's basically no purling at all, other than in the like ribbed edging. So I just thought this was a really nice core pattern that I could make again if I wanted to. So I'm excited to see how it turns out. Um, I've seen the sample knitters make them and they look lovely. Everyone that's made it, it looks an, like an absolutely beautiful pattern. And it just looks like a really nice basic wardrobe staple to have. And that's kind of what I'm looking for right now is I just need a little bit few more wardrobe staples in my life and I think that this blue color is just going to fit perfectly. I'm going to be able to wear it to the office and um, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't pill as much as my other garments do. So now I'm going to get into the holiday knits. So if you're on my family, I would kindly ask you to please stop watching because I'm going to be talking about your Christmas presents. Thank you very much. Let's first get into a new whip to share. So this first one is a cardigan for my husband, which has been a little bit of an uphill battle. So let me show you first what we're working with and then I'll explain the turmoil around this thing. So my husband had asked for a knit cardigan. I told him I wanted to make him something. It is both his 30th birthday and of course Christmas this December. And so I said I would make him whatever he wanted. And he said he wanted a keyboard cardigan. So I went and looked for a very long time until I finally settled on, and this is different than the cardigan I said I would be making in the Christmas video. So I'm basically making nothing I said I would in that video, although I think that those are all fantastic gift ideas. Um, this is what I have so far. So there's cabling on the front here, and then the rest of it's basically just a stitch pattern, but he said he really liked it. And this is a cardigan called The Bee's Knees by Faye Coldman. Coleman, sorry. So nice cabling panel up the front. This is actually um, a woman's cardigan, but I think it looks incredibly gender neutral. Um, I haven't seen anyone else at least model it on a man, but I showed it to my husband and he's like, yeah, that looks great. Um, if anything, I will extend the ribbing a little bit. I find that a lot of men's cardigans have more ribbing coming out of here. But for me, this is a very gender neutral pattern and I am just making it longer for him. So he is a very tall man. He's like six, six, one, somewhere in there. And so I, and he's very slim. So this is actually a size small, <laughs> a woman's size small. And um, it is going to have to be very tall. He's like very lanky. We're actually the same size t-shirt, which is wild to think about. He always says that he's me, but like stretched or I'm, I'm him, but squished. Um, we have the same pant size. Um, it's a lot. So anyways, 
this is what this looks like. So this, I am on my third ball of yarn and this is where the problem starts. So at first he had said that he wanted a navy blue cardigan. So I bought some Cascade 220. He had felt my yarns. He'd said Cascade 220 felt the best to him. And so I bought a sweater's quantity of Cascade 220 for him to make a cardigan with. Then he said, oh, I already have a navy blue cardigan. Can we do a gray one instead? And then I said, okay, come feel my yarns. This is what I have. I have some Drops Lima in gray. And do you like the feel of this? We could use this. And he said, oh yeah, that's great. So I started making it in Drops Lima, which is a DK weight, which this actually calls for a worsted, but I'm not noticing it causing any problems. The gauge is actually a stitch too big, which is fine. I think it's working. It's working good. I've measured it on him. Um, and I don't find that it's holy or like, I don't like the fabric or anything. But then he walked out yesterday in a gray cardigan. And I said, babe, is that a gray cardigan? And he's like, oh yeah. Oh wait, no, you're making me a gray cardigan. Can you make me a green cardigan? No, I cannot. No, I've already put many hours of knitting into this cardigan. So now I'm making him a gray cardigan of which he already has a gray cardigan. Anyways, so I had bought this drop cinema, I had bought this in Copenhagen, and I had bought it with the idea of making like a cropped sweater for me. So I have eight of these, and I'm already on the third ball for this, and I do not think I'm gonna make it. <laughs> did I buy this in Copenhagen, or did I buy this on Wool Warehouse? No, I think I bought this in Copenhagen. Um, so I'm gonna have to get some more of this and I just made a wool warehouse order and I'm going to have to make another one which is part of the reason I will not be going yarn shopping in Ottawa because I cannot find a shop in Ottawa or anywhere along the 401 that has Drops Lima in this color that I can buy. Um, this is just the gray color but I can buy it on wool warehouse so I'm going to be ordering I think I have eight of these I think I'm gonna order at least four more to make sure that I can get through this because these are only yeah, there's only a hundred meters in each of these balls and I only have eight of them and there's no way I can make a full men's cardigan with that much. So I might even need like six more. I'll probably order six more just to be safe. And then I have to like make the order worth it. So I'll probably, I have to, it's very difficult on me, um, order some more yarn. So yeah. And the only thing I really like to order from Will Warehouse is drops because that's the only thing that I think the price is worth um with the exchange rate and everything so i'm just gonna be drowning and drop staring i guess um but anyways i've been thoroughly enjoying this cardigan pattern i probably have to make this at least twice as long before i can split for the body and then the arms are basically just this pattern here and it's um a drop shoulder design um and a really cool there's really cool detail around the back of the neck that incorporates this cable design so i think it's really lovely it's really intentional and i've been wanting to try out the coleman's designs for a very long time and so i'm happy to be able to finally try out one of her cardigans and if this works out well for my husband maybe i'll make one of my own she had done hers in a beautiful yellow color which i probably have put up on the screen already um and i really like the idea of like a honey yellow cardigan so maybe that's in my future um but yeah it's been an enjoyable knit I was a little bit worried about making a men's cardigan especially when he said he wanted all over cables but thankfully thankfully I found I think a compromise where it's enough cabling and texture for him that he doesn't feel like it's uh I'm like not doing what he asked but it's also not going to like break my hands with doing a full all over cabled cardigan for man which is just like a lot to think about <laughs> so anyways I need to have this I do not think I'll have it done for his birthday his birthday is the first week of December and it's already what November 20th November 20th so I am almost definitely not going to have this done for his birthday but I am very much hoping to have it done for Christmas and I can gift it to him when I gift my family the rest of their gifts um let me show my sister's gift off next 
So I asked my sister what she wanted. She said she wanted a green cardigan. And I said, if you're getting a cardigan, it's gonna be chonky. And she said, that's totally fine. And so I had ordered Drops Andes in this beautiful green color. This is a super bulky yarn. And I have seen other people make really beautiful garments with it. It's got a really high twist. And so it just creates beautiful stitches. And so I have decided to make a Sunday cardigan with it. And this is what it's looking like. I decided on the Sunday cardigan because I already owned the pattern. Um, I was going to do the Thaka cardigan by Sari Nordlin, which is a beautiful pattern. I've made it for myself. And I was just worried that the length wouldn't work for my sister very well because she's sitting 90% of the time, 90, 99% of the time. Um, so I thought this would work a little bit better because it sits right at the hips. And so I have done a good chunk on the body. And of course, the whole yoke is done. And I just think it's looking really beautiful. Um, because I am working with a super bulky yarn and this yarn calls for a bulky weight, um, I have gone up a needle size. So I'm knitting the body in an eight millimeter instead of a seven millimeter. And I went to a size medium with the intention of getting a size closer to extra large. I've been trying it on myself as I've been going and it seems to fit really well. My sister and I are similar sizes and so I think it'll work really well on her as long as it fits on me. Um, I've got a little bit longer in the body to go, but yeah, I think it's looking really, really good. Um, maybe on the back we can show it a little bit better. So yeah, I really love the way that this textured yoke is coming out. And I've seen other people make this pattern in this yarn before, so I'm not like really fudging it up here. It is a double folded collar at the top and then just like a ribbing down the side. And yeah, I just think it's really, really beautiful. And I'm excited to get done with the body and then I think I have a much better sense of how it is fitting and how it is looking. Of course, tried it on with like barber cords in the body, but I think until you have that ribbing done, it's a little bit difficult to figure out how it's actually fitting. Then I can figure out some buttons for it. And yeah, I think I'm making really good progress on this and have it set for Christmas. The sleeves are only like 40 stitches, so they're just gonna fly. Um, I. I think I mentioned this last one, but I've forgotten how fast bulky weight goes. I was, I think here last night on the body and I did all of this in watching 40 minutes of television, which is just wild, especially considering that every other row is purling at this point, unheard of. So I might have a bulky weight cardigan in my future. <laughs> because um, this thing is just flying off the needles. I think it'll be just like a really squishy home cardigan as well. Um, and yeah, I'm really, I think the pattern's really good too. I have made a center sweater and it was one of my most worn sweaters until it felted. So that's fun. That was the one that was knit and dropped there and pilled like a mofo. Um, wow, that just brought me back to high school. I don't know why I said it like that. Wowza. Anyways. I'm so sorry for that. It feels a lot. And um, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I pilled a ton and, um, but I still wore it to death because it was my only black knit sweater. And um, yeah, the design just works really well. And I think um, I still prefer it in a fluffier yarn to this, just because for me personally, um, where it switches from pearl bumps to knits, sometimes that, that ridge bothers me a bit, but in this yarn, it's not bothering me as much. But it definitely, some people, I look at their Sunday sweaters and that ridge bothers me. So if it bothers you, I had knit mine in Drops Air, held with a strand of just a similar color of wool, um, fingering away wool as opposed to mohair. And um, it was fuzzy enough that it does, it wasn't very noticeable. So I would recommend that if that also bothers you. I've got one more knit to share. This has been way too much rambling in one episode and I feel like I'm losing my mind a little bit. I think it's around lunchtime and I could probably use something to eat. So let's fly through this. So this last knit is a knit from my mom who asked for a knit blanket 
for Christmas. And the last time I'd showed this to you, it looked a little bit different. So where is the ball of yarn? Here it is. So I'm getting this mostly in scraps and thrifted Cascade 220. And it is looking like this. Da -da -da. It is massive. I am using the Pearl Soho Rectangular Striped Bias Blanket Pattern. It is a free pattern on the Pearl Soho website and I am knitting, adapting it. I think it is originally knit in like a fingering weight and I am just using their measurements to make a nice size lap blanket. So the biggest thing that has happened since is that I have turned the corner. I have a corner. So from here to here, this is the width of the blanket and it is a blanket and on the bias and so it's going to have diagonal stripes down it. Um, you may notice that it looks different than the last time. These three colors are the same, but this color was a red and I, two episodes ago, I was filming at my parents' house and I realized that almost all of their house was cool toned and so giving them a warm toned blanket did not make sense to me and so I decided to rip out the red and replace it with the purple and I am transitioning this into a cool toned blanket. And so from this corner, I've got about 30 inches to knit before I can start decreasing down again. And I have two full skeins of this blue that I'm going to knit as far as I can. And then I've got some other fun colors to come out. Um, the one thing that's bothering me and I'm resisting ripping this whole thing out again, is that I don't love the way this white stripe looks. It's not my favorite but I showed it to my husband and he's like, no, 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 it's good. I had initially put the blue beside the purple because this blue is beautiful. It's like a peacock blue and it's got greens and purples inside of it. And so I thought it would look really good next to the purple, but there wasn't enough contrast. And so I figured I'd put a stripe between the purple and the blue, but now it just looks way too white. But I think once I finish the whole blanket, it won't bother me as much. But yeah, it's starting to be massive. Thank God, as this thing is taking a very long time. So this is the biggest section that I'm knitting now. This is the most stitches that will be on my needles. And um, yeah, so once this is up to 30 inches from the corner, then I will start decreasing towards the next corner. And I am convinced that I have enough yarn to finish it all. Um, Things that I'm thinking about when choosing colors is I want to make sure that every color has enough contrast between it. And I also want to make sure that the stripes are different sizes. So I'm hoping that this blue stripe here is going to be basically twice the size of the purple. Um, this green, this purple is about twice the size of the green. The white is half the size of the green. Um, and this guy is just a chonker down here. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to give it a lot of variation because I knew I wouldn't be able to make even stripes because I have varying amounts of the yarn. Um, some of this you may recognize. So this blue is thrifted. This white is thrifted. This purple is from my Sorry Dornland. Oh, what's the name of that design? It's a keyboard sweater I tested for her. Um, I can't remember the name of it this beautiful pattern I'll try and put a photo up and then these two are from my Lume from Sorry Nordland both of them so this is the main color and then this is one of the contrast colors and this used all up the green all up the purple I have a little bit of this this left I have a little bit of the white left and then I'm going to be using up all the blue so it's been really blasting through my Cascade 220 stash um which is really great because I have a lot of it it's one of my favorite yarns um I have a lot of it from making projects with it, but I've also managed to thrift a lot of it, which has been lovely. And is the reason it's not in the sale is because I adore Cascade 220 and I don't want to let any of you have it. So that's that, it's mine. Um, but yeah, it's renewed my love for Cascade 220. I will say that I really wanna make a sweater in it now. Um, and I guess I do have a stash of it in navy because my husband doesn't want the stupid cardigan in navy anymore. So um, maybe there's a navy Cascade 220 sweater in my future maybe. I mean, I am making a navy sweater right now, so there's only so much navy I can do. Imagine if 
I've made nothing in blue up to this point and I do the linen quill and also the Cascade 220 and then all of a sudden I have three navy sweaters. That would be a little ridiculous. Anyways, blanket is ongoing. I think it'll look better as it grows and I'm really hoping that white won't bother me quite as much. And I will say it is 100% wool blanket and it is extremely warm. Um, I have been knitting on it and obviously it sits in my lap while I knit on it. It's getting a little arduous to turn the blanket to um, switch sides. I'm knitting back and forth. Um, but yeah, it gets pretty warm sitting on my lap. So I've had a couple times they're like put the fan on me to make sure I'm cold enough to be able to have this thing sitting on me. So I'm really hoping my mom can use it well through the winter. Yes, that is all that I'm working on at the moment. I am putting most of my attention into the holiday knits because I actually only have about a month of knitting left before I need to gift them just because we're moving house. And I know that as soon as the moving starts, I will not be able to get much knitting done at all. I don't think so. Yeah, I have a couple more acquisitions to share with you and then we'll end this video out. Okay, so I had said I had done a wool warehouse order and I had done it primarily to get that mohair to pair with the drops hair. But of course I picked up some other things as well. Um, and all of it is drops because again, I find that when ordering from wool warehouse, um, drops was the best, it's the best deal I think. And they do have a sale on some other drops items going on right now. And of course I'm going to have to make another drops order. So I don't actually know what I'm gonna get because everything I wanted from drops I have already gotten. So, um, I'm gonna have a think about some things that I wanna make next. And yeah, cause I was anticipating actually making a yarn order for the rest of the year. With the exception, I did get some newt to done. I managed to get it in the next order and that is on its way to me, which is very exciting. And that's that's it. It's the only other order I was gonna make for the rest of the year. So um, yeah, and also one more thing. I was talking about um, how my wool warehouse order in the last episode was at that point late. Um, and it ended up coming three days late. So it wasn't too bad. Their shipping says seven to 14 days and mine was 17 days, I think. So yeah, they do have on their website though. I said order soon if you want the yarn before Christmas. They actually have last posting dates for getting the yarn before Christmas. And I think for Canada, it was December or something. So I think you're actually in good shape if you need the yarn before Christmas, if you're gifting yarn to someone. Um, but maybe not so much if you are getting the yarn to make something to get to someone, if that makes sense. So let me show you what I got. Um, the They're both a sweaters quantity. They're each for sweaters. So the first one is Drops Flora and a matching mohair. Um, this Drops Flora, I really wanted a light gray sweater. I have recently um, done a test knit for um, the Knit Pearl Girl and she gifts patterns if you test for her and complete the test knit and so I am planning to knit her crescendo blouse which calls for a fingering weight and a mohair and it is a pattern that I have admired for a long time and now that it is free to me I'm very happy to knit it um, and so I am knitting it in this combination which I think will be absolutely lovely and I got six of each of these to be able to make it and this is 65% wool, 35% alpaca and I think it'll just provide a really lovely drape to this pattern. The Crescendo series has um, options for, I think like bulky weight all the way down to fingering weight. So she has the sweater and the blouse and the chunky edition. So if you like that design, I would highly recommend getting any of the patterns that work for you. She also has a t-shirt version and I think I'm knitting that as well because I actually have the called for yarn for it, but um, it's maybe thinking a little bit too far ahead. But yeah, so I think that this will make just the most gorgeous light gray sweater. I've been wanting a sweater in this color for a very long time and yeah I think that'll be lovely. And then the last one that I got is intended to make a zipper sweater by Petite Knit or something like it and I'm going to be making the classic but reversed so I'm making a black sweater with white stripes. So I got eight of these, four of these. This is just Drops Nepal which is their Erin weight yarn and it is yeah, 65% wall, 35% alpaca again. And I had actually gotten this, I had ordered the off-white and this is, I think just the white. 
So I don't know what happened there, but I think I'll be fine. Not really bothered by it. And one of the things I'm considering actually getting is just more of these to make a white version with black stripes. That's an idea that I have. Um, so if you have sweater ideas for things to make in drops, leave them down below because um, I will be ordering some more out of necessity to be able to get enough yarn to finish that darn cardigan for my husband. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna end it here. I think I've been rambling for a long time. Um, I'm hoping to do some special content over the holiday season, kind of a vlogmas sort of situation. So if there's any videos that you're hoping to see from me, please leave them, them down below. I'm hoping to upload a lot more through December. No promises, it's a busy month, but um, I'm really looking forward to it and yeah i guess i will thank you thank you for being here subscribe if you haven't already and sign up for that email list if you're interested in buying any of those yarns i'm hoping to have it up within the next week i'm sorry it wasn't up in correlation with this podcast episode but hopefully that email list will make you feel like you're getting the first scoop um and if you don't want to sign up for the email list feel free to follow me on instagram i will also be posting it on there um thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time Bye.